All right, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin. The Terra Luna cryptocurrency is dead, practically. While once trading at over $100 just a few weeks ago, it is now down to fractions of fractions of a penny. Now, if you want a recap of exactly what happened, why the price crashed, I will link our original video from just three days ago down below in the video description, the insane collapse of Terra Luna, Seek this out, link down below, because in today's video, I wanna give you an update on what to expect next. Do Kwan's proposal to reset the Terra Luna blockchain, a fresh look into the billions of dollars of Bitcoin that Terra Luna held, what happened to the Bitcoin, as well as a few pieces of altcoin news that you should know as an investor. So like always, check the timestamps down below, hit the like button if you wanna support me, and let's jump in by just first off analyzing how Terra Luna's price got here. Many people see this and think, wow, the price crashed. Everybody must have sold. That's why the price crashed. And that's only a little bit true because in reality, price equals supply and demand. So yes, demand did go down. That was some people selling, but the majority of this was actually supply increasing. As per the latest data from the block research, Luna's circulating supply did a 19,000 X in four days. This is hyperinflation. Hyperinflated coins are worth less. So here is a chart of Luna's circulating supply as of yesterday. And as you can see, trillions and trillions and trillions of coins were printed. Now, why did Do Kwan and the Terra Luna Foundation do this? Well, they printed more to sell on the open market in an attempt to prop up their stablecoin UST. And as we know from coverage on this channel, they have failed thus far. UST currently sitting at 15 cents on the dollar. Anyway, back to Luna. I share this with you because so many people I saw on Twitter were buying the dip, buying thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of Luna because they thought, wow, if it just gets back to a dollar, if it just goes back to $100 plus its all time high, I'll be a billionaire. If you have heard that from other hype channels, they're lying to you. Altcoin Daily is going to bring you the truth. Because the supply was inflated, the price will never go back to what it once was, let alone even a dollar. The Terra Luna crash has seen the Luna circulating supply increase from an original supply of 345 million to now almost 6.5 trillion Luna. This means for Luna to just get back to $1, it will need to grow market cap 13 times as large as Bitcoin's. So it's not happening, at least not happening this decade. Unless, of course, they take back that supply, reset the blockchain, and that's exactly what Do Kwan, in part, has proposed to do. Do Kwan resurfaces to propose a clean slate for Terra, this time without the UST stablecoin. So this was proposed just two days ago, Do Kwan called this his ecosystem revival plan, and in it, he suggested that UST is not coming back and that the Terra blockchain must redistribute tokens to move forward. In a direct quote from Do Kwan on why he says the ecosystem needs to redistribute the tokens, he says, the holders of Luna have so severely been liquidated and diluted that we will lack the ecosystem to build back up from the ashes. While a decentralized economy does need decentralized money, UST has lost too much trust with its users to play the role. I agree. Even if they got the peg back to a dollar, I don't really see people trusting their money in UST. Now, instead of building back with UST, Quan proposes revitalizing the network around the Terra blockchain network. We've built up one of the largest, most vibrant developer ecosystems in crypto, with some of the smartest minds in the world working on products with the best UI UX. And yes, Terra Luna does have a growing, dare I say thriving DeFi ecosystem that dApps were being built on. Now, of course, if Do Kwan wants to redistribute the tokens, the devil is in the details. How exactly does he plan to do it? Well, as I said at the beginning, right now, there are over 6.5 trillion tokens for Terra Luna, Terra founder Do Kwan is proposing resetting Luna back to just 1 billion tokens distributed in this way. 40% to Luna holders before the depegging event, 
That means it would not count if you bought the dip, if you bought it for pennies on the dollar, 40% would just go back to those original holders before the collapse. Another 40% would go to the UST stablecoin holders pro rata at the time of the new network upgrade. So anybody that still holds the stablecoin would get allocated that 40%. Then another 10% to Luna holders at the final moment before the chain halt. As you know, the Luna blockchain was halted twice on Friday. And then the final 10% would just go in a community pool to further the growth of the new Terra Luna 2 blockchain. So that is the proposal on the table. Again, it's up to the community on if this goes through, if this is tweaked in any way, or if this is voted on as is. Now, next up, Do Kwon did take to Twitter. This is the last message he put out a few days ago saying that he was heartbroken over Terra's demise. Here was that exact tweet. I've spent the last few days on the phone calling Terra community members, builders, community members, employees, friends, and family that have been devastated by the UST depegging. I am heartbroken about the pain my invention has brought you all. I still believe that decentralized economies deserve decentralized money, but it's clear that UST in its current form will not be that money. Now, did Do Kwan cash out in time or did he lose his money too? Neither I nor any institution that I'm affiliated with profited in any way from this incident. I sold no Luna nor UST during the crisis. We are currently working on documenting the use of the Luna Foundation Guards BTC reserve during the depegging event. Please be patient with us as our teams are juggling multiple tasks at the same time. So Do Kwan is going to put out a post-mortem report on exactly what happened. But that does bring us to our next obvious question. What happened to the $3.5 billion in Bitcoin that were sitting in Terra's reserves? Right? They bought that Bitcoin for a reason. And nobody knows what exactly happened to those reserves and where they are now. So we are waiting on that post-mortem from Do Kwan. But they did have over 80,000 Bitcoin in the reserves worth billions of dollars. Now, analyst firms have done a little analysis and tried to pinpoint where exactly those Bitcoin went. For example, Do Kwan told us three, four days ago that a loan of $750 million worth of BTC were going to OTC trading desks to help protect the peg. So out of that 80,000 BTC, that does represent around 22,000 BTC worth that amount of money at the time. So that's about 25% of their reserves. Now, later that evening, a further 30,000 BTC worth almost a billion dollars at the time was sent from other LFG wallets to the same address. Again, we assume OTC trading desks. After that, within hours, the entirety of this 52,000 plus BTC was moved to a single account at US crypto exchange Gemini via several Bitcoin transactions. Again, this was days ago. And the reason they had all this Bitcoin, the purpose of having a very large reserve of Bitcoin was potentially to purchase UST, their stablecoin, to push the price back up to $1, which is probably the reason it was sent to exchanges. But it's not possible using the blockchain alone to identify whether it was sold to support the UST price. So while all that Bitcoin was sent to exchanges, we do not know whether all of it, some of it, how much of it was sold, or how much Terra Luna still has left. If you have thoughts on any of this, I encourage you to comment, share your thoughts down below. We are all checking the comment section together right now. And next up, let's talk about the latest altcoin news that you should know as an investor. But real quick, have you taken advantage of this yet? Get up to $100 in crypto with Altcoin Daily through our partnership with FTX US. FTX is one of the most respected exchanges in the game, fully regulated in the US, and they have fees up to 85% cheaper than competitors, and they're literally trusted by millions. So if you want to earn cryptocurrency just by using the platform, use code Altcoin Daily when you sign up or get started today with this QR code. Link down below. Take advantage. And moving forward, let's talk about the Flow altcoin. Topshot Creator unveils a $725 million fund to support the Flow ecosystem. So this new ecosystem fund for Flow will be used to support the 7,500 developers on Flow to build new gaming, infrastructure, DeFi, and content creator products 
on the NFT blockchain. So this is major support for the Flow ecosystem. And in fact, this new fund was backed by 17 firms that have experience backing other successful Web3 companies, including large investment firms like A16Z, Spartan Group, and CoinFund. So now that these companies have invested, what specifically will these hundreds of millions of dollars be used for? The funds will be used to attract developers to bring their work onto Flow instead of competitor Ethereum, which still dominates NFTs despite high gas fees. And within the Flow ecosystem itself, the funds will provide support for gaming, infrastructure, DeFi, content, and creators. So this is Flow's push to outcompete Ethereum, outcompete Cardano, Solana, etc. And they got major funding to do it. And next piece of news for Symbiosis Finance, huge integration with One Inch. We want to be a silver lining in today's turbulent world and bring some cool news. Integration with One Inch enables the best price discovery for cross-chain swaps. So just as a reminder, Symbiosis is a multi-chain liquidity protocol offering major interoperability for DeFi or anything that needs liquidity and needs to jump from one chain to another. And today they've announced that they've partnered and integrated with One Inch to enable the best price discovery for cross-chain swaps. Pretty cool. Love to see the progress. And next piece of news for altcoin Stepin. Stepin's move to earn model has crypto analysts seeing a long-term value. And just for some background, this move to earn app on the Solana blockchain has users get crypto rewards back just from walking, just from jogging. Anyway, the news today is this. The fitness app has grown to more than 300,000 daily active users in just a few months. So anyway, cool to see fitness and crypto move to earn kind of becoming super popular and cool to see the user growth for Steppen. That is the video. My name's Austin. Like always, see you tomorrow.